Chapter 23 Pinocchio weeps for the death of the beautiful blue-haired child. Then he meets a pigeon who carries him to the seashore, where he dives into the water to save his father. When Pinocchio was freed from that heavy, humiliating collar on his neck, he started out across the fields, never stopping for a second until he reached the road which led to the fairy's house. When he reached it, he stopped to look down on the countryside. He could see plainly with his naked eye the site where he unluckily met the fox and the cat. He could see the wood with the big oak on which he had been hanged. But although he looked everywhere, he could not see the little house where the lovely blue-haired child had lived. Driven by a sad foreboding, he ran with all his might, and in a few minutes he reached the field where the little white house had once stood. But the little white house was no longer there. Instead, there was a little piece of white marble on which these sad words were engraved. Here lies the blue-haired child who died of sorrow on being deserted by her little brother, Pinocchio. I leave you to imagine the puppet's feelings when he spelt out this inscription. He fell to the ground and, kissing the cold stone a thousand times, burst into a flood of tears. He cried all night, and at dawn he was still crying, although he had no more tears. His wailing and moaning was so loud and penetrating that it was echoed from all the neighbouring hills. As he wept, he said, Oh, dear fairy, why are you dead? Why didn't I die, I who am so wicked, instead of you who were so good? And my father, where is he? Oh, dear little fairy, tell me where I can find him, for I want to stay with him forever and never, never leave him. Dear fairy, tell me it is not true that you are dead. If you really love me, if you love your little brother, come to life just once more. Come back as you were before. Are you not sorry to see me here alone? abandoned by everybody? Should the assassins come again, they will hang me, and then I shall be dead forever. What can I do alone in the world? Now that I have lost you and my father, who will look after me? Where shall I sleep? Who will make me a new jacket? Oh, it will be better a hundred times better if I die too. Yes, I want to die. Boo hoo hoo. And in this desperate state, he tried to tear his hair. But as it was made of wood, he could not even stick his fingers through it. At this moment, a large pigeon flying high above him stopped with outstretched wings and called to him. Tell me, child, what are you doing down there? Don't you see? I'm crying, said Pinocchio, looking towards the voice and rubbing his eyes with his jacket. Tell me, continued the pigeon, do you know among your friends a puppet called Pinocchio? Pinocchio? Did you say Pinocchio? shouted the puppet, jumping to his feet. I'm Pinocchio. At this answer, the pigeon quickly alighted to the ground. He was larger than a turkey. Do you know Geppetto too? He asked. Do I know him? He is my poor father. Has he spoken to you of me? Will you take me to him? Is he still alive? Tell me quickly, for heaven's sake, is he still alive? I left him three days ago on the sea coast. What was he doing? He was making a little boat to cross the ocean in. The poor man has been wandering around the world more than three months and looking for you. As he couldn't find you, he decided to search for you in distant countries. How far is it from here to the sea coast? Pinocchio asked anxiously. Nearly 600 miles. 
Nearly six hundred miles? Oh, dear pigeon, what a fine thing it would be if I had wings like you. If you want to go, I shall carry you. How? Astride on my back. Are you very heavy? Heavy? No, indeed. I'm as light as a feather. Without wasting another word, Pinocchio jumped on the pigeon's back, with a leg on each side of him like a rider on a horse, and shouted gaily, Gallop, gallop, little horse, for I'm in a terrible hurry. The pigeon took flight, and in a few minutes he was so high that they almost touched the clouds. Once at that great height, the puppet grew very curious and looked down. But he got so frightened and the sight made him so dizzy that he put his arms tight around the neck of his feathered steed to save himself from falling off. They flew all day. Towards evening, the pigeon said, I am so thirsty and I am so hungry, said Pinocchio. Let us stop a few minutes at this dovecote, then we shall continue our flight, and by dawn we shall be at the sea coast. They entered a deserted dovecote, where there was nothing but a basin of water and a basket full of green seed. The puppet had never in his life been able to eat green seed, for, as he said, it turned his stomach. But that evening, he could not eat enough of it, and when the basket was empty, he said to the pigeon, I couldn't have believed green seed could taste so good. You will learn, my lad, replied the pigeon, that when you are really hungry and there is nothing else to eat, even green seed becomes delicious. Hunger is the best cook. After having finished this little meal, they did not rest, but continued their journey. The next morning, they arrived at the seashore. The pigeon stopped to let Pinocchio dismount and then quickly flew away. He did not want to be thanked for having done a good deed. The beach was full of people who were shouting and gesticulating as they looked out to the sea. What's happened? Pinocchio asked of an old woman. A poor father has lost his son and he intends crossing the sea in a small boat to search for him but the waves are so high that the boat will capsize. Where is the boat? Right there where my finger points, said the old woman, pointing to a little boat which, at that distance, looked like a nutshell with a very small man in it. Pinocchio looked closely and uttered a piercing cry, It's my father! It's my father! Meanwhile, the little boat, thrown by the angry waves, once disappeared completely, then reappeared on the top of a wave. Pinocchio, standing on a high rock, called his father by name again and again, signalling with his hands, with his cap and with his handkerchief. Although Geppetto was very far away, he seemed to recognise his son, for he waved with his cap, and he also made signs as if he would like to return to land. But the sea was so furious that he could not use his oars. Suddenly, there came a huge wave and the little boat disappeared. They waited to see it again. Poor man, said the fisherman who was standing together on the beach. And murmuring a prayer, they turned to go home. Suddenly, they heard a desperate shout and looking back, they saw a boy jumping into the sea from a rock crying, I will save my father. Pinocchio, being made of wood, floated easily and swam like a fish. They saw him disappear under the water, beaten about by the waves, and then he reappeared. In the distance, now a leg appeared, now an arm. But at last, they lost sight of him altogether. Poor boy, said the fisherman on the beach, and murmuring a prayer, they went home.